Hello and welcome. We're going to have a look at Page d'Album by Claude Debussy. And this is a piano lesson made at the request of Callum. Thank you. Delighted to be doing this for you. This piece was written in 1915, so Debussy was already quite a mature composer by this point. He had already written um, Estomp, both sets of Image, uh, Children's Corner, the first book of Preludes, so all those sort of really core bits of Debussy were already out there. So um, it's wonderful to have a piece like this that's very short. It's a great introduction into some mature Debussy. And it uh, uses a lot of dominant seventh chords. And can I refer to you to a video by In the YouTube channel Inside the Score? Um, I watched one about a month ago on what makes music French and he was discussing the notion how dominant seventh chords we take a A flat dominant seventh for hundreds of years that needed to go to there that unstable sound takes us there but how once we get to Debussy that could go it could go somewhere else it could exist on its own in effect <laughs> or lead, lead, lead who knows where. Um, uh, in fact, if you, if you play lots of Chopin, you'll know that that doesn't always happen. Dominant sevenths do go elsewhere. Um, and it's a key feature of if you study jazz harmony. Um, though what happens to those dominant seventh chords is absolutely crucial um, in creating the colours of jazz. But anyway, I'm digressing far too far. Um, this piece was written, as I think you probably will know, uh, to raise money for um, soldiers wounded in the First World War, 1915. And I, my understanding is that um, Debussy made a copy of it, and it was a signed copy. As I said, it was well established by this point, and it was auctioned off. I don't know how much money it raised, I wonder. Let's have it. There's lots in it. There's a few things I'm going to contradict, a few things in the score that I'm not too sure about, don't make much sense to me. I'll, I'll discuss those as we go. I think it'd be really useful to play it through just hands separately. So let me start with the right hand. We have three beats in the bar. We have one flat. We're sort of F major. That's certainly where we end. Lots and lots of changes in the speed, aren't there? Mouvement, cédé, pull it back. En serrant means basically um, squash it in. I, I made it a bit quicker. Mouvement, en serrant, mouvement, en retenant, so pull back the speed, cede, pull back the speed, and pour anime, so go a bit faster, rubato, play expressively. Huge numbers of, uh, of, of instructions to be flexible with the tempo. But in this walkthrough now, as we go steadily, and we'll probably keep it fairly steady, I suspect, let's have a look at the right hand melody, and we'll get some difficulties even in bar three and four. <laughs> One, two, three. So this is the melody. So I just played through the melody there. That's the chord that Debussy is playing with. I think it's, it looks a bit like a, an A7, but in fact it's a, probably, is it, are we meant to be hearing A minor, or are we hearing F, which is where we're going to end up at the end? I think, because I'm hearing A minor there, because we haven't had any Fs until we get to, to there. So he's playing with that A, sorry, that F9 chord, isn't he? F major 9. Now let's have a look at... add in that alto line underneath that necessitates some fussy fingering and some finger swaps and I think there are pretty much no alternatives to what I've just done. Let's look at it again. Swap to five. Quick swap. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you find something else that works better. And always that we want that melody to be louder than that alto descending line. I find it helpful often to sing along as I play. La, da, da, da. 
it's making me focus in on that melody. And even when I'm not singing out aloud, I'm doing that in my head, I'm listening to it, in effect. And that makes me play it louder. Let's move on. Again, that same chord notes that we've talked about, that F major nine. Let's add another note, add the 11th. En serrant, my interpretation of that is it means it get a bit faster. I you know, squash it in together, which leads up to a... And it's going to be, that's, those are the notes of an E flat seven chord, dominant seventh chord. And notice how those notes belong to the whole tone scale, much loved by Debussy. You can create a sort of otherworldly sound with those notes. You'll want to sort of get your head around that arpeggio. Really, really work out what, what's going on there so you can play it confidently smoothly and it ends with a, a G7 chord again so many dominant seventh chords I like that fingering I see stacks of thirds as well going on all through this piece um, I like that fingering because uh, I'm getting sidetracked by the harmony aren't I all the time I wanting to discuss that let's just focus in on how to play it for a minute I quite like that fingering because I can do it reasonably comfortably. If that's an awkward, I guess some onto the F is possible as well. It makes sense to play these bars. And lots of pedal. You could pedal once per bar. Or once per two bars. It's all the same chord. me of Poulenc, this isn't Poulenc, but Poulenc often wrote Beignet de Pedal, this washes of pedal. Um, I think that works really well. Uh, let's carry on. We've got the tune bar 19 that we know. We know what's going to happen here. Cede pull back. Now then, this bit is really tricky. Let's have a think what's going to happen. What's going to happen is this. We've got an... We've got that going on with these rest. rest. With those little held chords. Put them together in a, one single hand is not easy. Let's have a think. A great exercise for that. This is sort of pulled out of uh, Doc Gnani does this kind of thing a lot. Let me illustrate it on a um, six chord, a major six chord. So you can see clearly what I'm doing and I spread between the fingers. I'm going to hold each note and I'm going to play the others in pairs. So the holding of the one note is absolutely crucial for this exercise have its benefit. Okay, that feels okay. Let's hold that one. Sorry, one minute there, but while I do pairs with others. Notice at the moment I'm doing the pairs of notes detached to make sure that they're absolutely together whilst I'm keeping the other note held. It's difficult. <laughs> it's more difficult. Ah, I, mean, I can't talk and do it at the same time. It's more difficult if you try and do it legato. They're not together, are they? They're better. Mm. The last one is more comfortable. Phew! But that's a great exercise for getting your head around what is going on here. 
Let's go from 27, it's similar. Now what I do is play the F and the B flat with four and five. Sorry. Let me do that one more time. In the Associated Ball booklet, there's some more alternative fingering. I guess it's if your hand is slightly smaller, but it seems quite flaffy and fussy to me anyway. And then the ending is relatively straightforward. Again, the same chord notes that we spoke about at the start. Let's have a think through the left hand, and we're gonna see a lot of dominant seventh chords here in various inversions. Well, that, if I hold on to the B flat, that's an E flat seven. That's an A seven. C7, which takes us to F, our home key. Rest. Again, beignet the pedal, lots of pedal going on there, linking everything up and creating those notes all fit in together. They fit in together. And now we've got, now, <laughs> just before doing the tutorial, because I, I read through the music, I have always learnt this piece with that note, this D being, being the bass note that's held throughout that bar. And I noticed that some of these uh, staccato dots are, I think, editorial in the ABRSM booklet. And I, I like that sound very much. But it does occur to me maybe that is what is wanted. <laughs> Have a listen to lots of other people and I'll let you sweat over what's right and what's wrong. I, I, I wouldn't sweat over it. it just it, enjoy thinking about it, exploring both and working out how you want to play it. But um, for now I'm gonna do with a short D gonna to have to be five there. I, again, I, I learnt, learnt this with a thumb going to the A. A, B, R, S, M suggests two, doesn't really matter. Again, I'm using the pedal, obviously, to link up that to that, and then pedal off, if you want that D short. And now I'm sure you can see that the chord sequence that Debussy's got there repeats itself and you just get, get your head around what, what he's doing there playing with that movement there and that F chord is going to take us to our E flat 9 chord isn't it and then this bit we looked at already let's move on more dominant seventh chords are E flat C, A, E flat, C and A. Mm. They all belong to a diminished triad, don't they? E flat, C and A. Okay. Sorry, what's he written? He's written that inversion. C leads to F. Here, these D's don't have these staccato dots, and in my mind, they absolutely do belong to the chord and need to be held with the pedal. Um, my addition, again, staccato dots seem to be the problem thing. <laughs> has uh, staccato dots above those minimum chords. That makes no sense to me whatsoever. I don't think for a minute Debussy wants Um, why wouldn't you just write a crotchet then a crotchet rest? Um, did Debussy's pen leak dots? <laughs> Don't know. Don't know, but the guy who for a minute makes no sense to me. <laughs> I'm just going to have to leave it at that, I'm afraid. 
So we've got these chords going on. Then he changes the chord to a C7. And here, rest. Count very carefully. Be prepared for that, which is going to clash. Of course, we've got an E natural in there. In there. Count very carefully. That linked with a pedal to that. That links to the G. Rest. Count the rests. So the pedal is going to do all that linking in the left hand there for us. Right, shall we just think it through with both hands together, nice and steadily. Again, I'm probably going to keep the tempo fairly steady because I'm playing it so slowly. But when we perform it, lots and lots of variations in tempo. Okay. One, two, three. Lots of pedal here. That chord wasn't very well together. Smooth tune at the top. Pedal off. Sorry. where you're going for that arpeggio. Might need to drill it a little bit. Nice spread. Core lots of thirds just stacking up. Yeah, third finger over the top there. <laughs> Sorry, trying to fiddle with my hair at the same time playing the piano, not a good idea. Crescendo there. Prepare for dissonance. notes. Off. Um, it, it's a fascinating piece, so much in it, and it really takes us into Debussy's sound world, these dominant seventh chords that just exist for their own sake. A few contentious things to think about. Is this really meant to be staccato there? Am I meant, to, is that really meant to be staccato or is it editorial? Or Debussy's leaky pen? Um, a huge amount of pulling about of the tempo, follow all the instructions that are on the, on the music. Um, and uh, it's, uh, and that really tricky bit where we have to hold on to some things and so that we keep the tune legato whilst other things are going on in all in the same hand. And that exercise of holding um, will really help with that. Um, Callum, I hope that was useful. If you have any questions, do get in touch uh, or put them in the comments down below. Enjoy your practice. Take care. Bye-bye for now.